Hey there, once again, YouTube. So, I know it's been a long time. I haven't done a video for, what, like, two, three months? Well, still around, still alive and kicking, coronavirus-free as far as I know. Uh, we're I'm in Washington State in Kirkland, so we're on lockdown. You know, we can still do a few things, but it hasn't been too bad. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, let's see. I've been focusing on family. was going to try to get my CDL. I've been studying that for quite a while. got my permit and everything, and I was supposed to start school in a week, but... They pushed that off till April 15th, but it could go on longer. It could be April 30th. Uh, I don't know. I'm hoping that starts up back up again soon. Let's kill this damn virus so we can get back to what we do best. Now, I am on here because of this. We saw magnitude 6.5 in Shalis or Chalice. Don't know how to pronounce that one. I'm terrible at pronunciation, so forgive me on that one. Um... Made you 6.5, very strong shaking felt throughout Idaho, even parts of uh, north, nor, uh, northwest uh, Wyoming and parts of Montana as well. Don't know why they have made you 3.6 covered in red, because when it's the red face, that means it's on their significant earthquake archive thingamabob. Uh, let's go here, see how many people reported feeling the in Idaho, not too far from Boise, actually. We're going to take a look at the seismic data of it real quick and see which fault it struck on. Who knows, though? Who knows? Let's see here. Okay, so this earthquake struck about ooh, an hour and a half ago from the time I'm recording this. It's Right now it's 6.17 p.m. Pacific time, which would be 7.17 p.m. Mountain time right now. I think it was about an hour and a half ago or so. We'll take a look at the exact timing in just a minute. For 21,000, almost 22,000, did you feel it reports people who went to USGS and reported that they felt this earthquake? Some of them reported feeling strong shaking, no economic losses or fatalities, not even any liquefaction, but there is a little bit of landslide problem. There could be. And, oh, look at that. They just updated it with a explanation. USGS says the March 31st, 2020, magnitude 6.5 earthquake west of chalice or chalice idaho about 120 kilometers northeast of boise occurred as the result of strike slip faulting really is that a strike slip moment tensor because uh, maybe it is i don't know that's kind of weird okay strike slip faulting within the shallow crust of the north american plate preliminary focal mechanism solution for the event which described the style and faulting of this earthquake Indicate slip occurred on a steeply dipping fault striking either east-west or north-south. This earthquake occurred within the Intermountain Seismic Belt, a prominent zone of recorded seismicity in the Intermountain West, and is within the western part of the uh, Centennial Tectonic Belt, an area of southwest to northeast extension north of the Snake River Plain. The quake is about 16 kilometers north-northeast of the Sawtooth Fault, a 60-kilometer-long fault that extends along the eastern base of the Sawtooth Range. So, is this on an unknown fault they haven't mapped yet? Could be, actually. Historic seismicity in the immediate vicinity of the March 31st earthquake is sparse. No earthquakes of magnitude 5 plus have occurred within 50 kilometers of this event over the past 50 years. Um, a little bit longer than 50 years ago, though, there were a couple magnitude 6s. And the most notable historic seismicity in the region occurred about 100 kilometers to the east on the Lost River Fault Zone. This was the site of the 1983 magnitude 6.9, some people say it was a 7.3, but give or take, uh, Bora Peak earthquake on October 28, 1983, which was followed by five other magnitude plus events, and most recently a 5.0 earthquake, January 2015, about 60 kilometers to the east of today's event. The March 31st, 2020 event today's is the largest in Idaho since the Bora Peak earthquake. That event killed two in Chalice and resulted in over $12 million in damage in the Chalice uh, McKay area. As of an hour after this earthquake, two aftershocks have been located by the USGS, both to the south of the magnitude 6.5 event. So, this is the second largest earthquake, as I'm going to show you one, I'll just show you right now. So here we are at the USGS Earthquake Catalog. Let's do magnitude 5.0. Oh, whoops. Let's do 5.5 and above. The start time, we're going to go to January 1st, 1900, which is when record keeping began right around there for USGS and any uh, institutions trying to record earthquakes and keep track of them. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to custom. Let's go to Idaho, if this will let me. Sorry if the video is a little laggy. My computer is a little slow today. Zoom all the way in, guys. All the way in, and it's just taking its sweet time. Come on, buddy. Okay, so we're going to select this whole area of Idaho. Since it's a square box, 
or a rectangle box. It's going to get a little bit more than just Idaho, but there we go. All right, so use this region, and then we're going to quick search. So here we do see a lot of earthquakes. The most recent magnitude 5.5 and above besides today's earthquake was a magnitude 5.6 in 1984. Yeah, it's been a long time since Idaho has seen any significant earthquake activity. Um, we do see some large earthquakes over here in Wyoming, but that right there is the Hebgen Lake earthquake 7.3 in near Yellowstone. And we got some earthquakes up in Montana, but right down here, let's go to this. Let's zoom all in. Basically, central source of seismicity for the whole state of Idaho. And notice that, remember, the 1983, the largest earthquake was 6.9. What we see, today's was 6.5, and there are none others that are larger for the Idaho area. Let's go to largest magnitude first real quick. 7.3, 6.9, 6.9 in Montana. Does not count because that's Montana. And we have a 6.5 today's right here. So if you see Idaho, Idaho. This one's not related. This one's not related. So second largest in over 120 years, guys. Maybe even longer. I mean, who knows? So let's take a look real quick and see what fault this earthquake actually struck on. All right, so down here, here we have Boise down here. And here is today's earthquake and some aftershocks, actually. Now, magnitude 6.5 did not have any four shocks. You'll see that in the seismic data when I show in just a second. Sorry, guys, if it is lagging like crazy right now. Um, so, we see right down here, Redfish Lake, right? All right, now we're going to go to coordinary faults from the USGS right down here. Now, man, laggy, laggy, laggy. Redfish Lake right here. See this line going all the way through this area right down here? That is a fault system called the was it Sawtooth Fault. It's a pretty large fault in Idaho, guys. And the thing is, is notice the location. It's right along the western edge of Redfish Lake. goes all the way up through here. Uh, let's see here. That's part of the Sawtooth Fault, too. So it goes all the way up right into this location right here, which would be right in here where we saw this aftershock however it does not go up into the magnitude 6.5 right up here and on the quaternary faults which shows all the map faults from usgs they are not showing any fault systems in this location the closest one would be the sawtooth fault but it's too far to the southwest to be even associated for the, with this magnitude 6.5 unless it, this sawtooth fault is much much larger than they think and it goes up and curves around in this location you can kind of see the curve of the mountains right here. You notice that? If the fault truly does run like this right here, and the fault and the mountains curve just like that, that would lead directly, basically directly to the magnitude 6.5. So it's very possible that the fault does curve up through here and right along there. And, you know, the location varies by a few kilometers. So very well could be a continuation of the Sawtooth Fault or a completely brand new fault that they've never discovered. But we do have some random aftershocks. Uh, this one does not appear to be on a fault that I know of or is even labeled by USGS. Um, but these two are associated with the Sawtooth Fault. So if this is on a different fault, it definitely rattled the Sawtooth Fault a little bit. Or they are connected. I don't know. I don't know, man. It's pretty weird. So no known fault yet. We'll see what USGS has to say if they update their fault map or something. Here we are at the USGS Earthquake Map uh, event page, origin page. We're going to go to phases. We're going to see the closest seismic station to this magnitude 6.5. Laggy, laggy, laggy computer right now, guys. My goodness. So it's POID in the IW network, broadband vertical, BHC, 00 location code. Let's go to the data download site from Iris. I already have it all entered and ready to go. All right, let's click that link. And see if it downloads. Yes, it does. Let's take a look at it in the Seismic Program Swarm. All right, so here we have the most recent data stream in the Seismic Program Swarm, which can read seismic data straight from those seismic instruments, guys. Right on the ground, come live. Right from the instruments, which is why I love this stuff. Uh, let's see, same channel and everything. This is just as of the past few minutes, the last data stream right here at the end, past few minutes. Um, we see, check this out. I'm actually going to... Add a 1 hertz high pass filter to the 8th power so that all those background microseisms are not shown because they just get in the way. 
All right, nothing was going on. Look at this. Blank. I mean, just maybe a regional earthquake signature here and there, but it was just quiet. And all of a sudden, boom, we see the magnitude 6.5 right here. Let's take a look at the waveforms real quick. Not really a clear P wave arrival, but the clear S wave arrival right in this location somewhere right there. Pretty strong, guys. Lasted quite a while. Went up to 3E6 on the amplitude count, guys. That's very, very strong. Going forward, you could see tail of the earthquake. Very, so many aftershocks, actually, right here. I mean, look at, right in, so fast, guys. Look at this. I mean, the aftershocks are just nuts. They're almost constant. And they almost don't look like earthquakes. Because that's not surface activity, guys. That is not surface activity, that. Yeah, it was very, very, so many aftershocks. I doubt they're going to be able to locate many of them at all until they get at least a little separated. But the aftershock sequence is very strange. They don't look like real earthquakes. I mean, look at this. Look at this right here. What, what is that? Is that tremor? Is something, it could, it could be the fault is splitting open slowly, or but then that would show a lower frequency signature then. And it doesn't here. So I don't know, guys. Very, very strange. Let me zoom all the way out. See, look at all those aftershocks, guys. Zoom all the way out and look at that. Those are all aftershocks. So we haven't just seen three aftershocks on a nearby fault from this earthquake. We've seen lots, probably from the same fault that caused this 6.5 right here. And as we go forward, the most recent, we still see continuing aftershocks, which probably continue for the next few days or so. Looks like it is starting to calm down a little bit, but just like we saw in California... There may be a bigger one that comes, but the chances are low. So, very, very intriguing, guys. Yep, so in my opinion, I think it's just a continuation of the Sawtooth Fault. That, it, that the Sawtooth, Sawtooth Fault is just much, much longer than they think no, it is and no. curves a little bit. Say hi, Eli. This is my son, Eli. Say hi. Hi! Oh, my goodness. So, not some earthquakes in the hi. world <laughs> right, right now, but we do have that 6.5 in Idaho. No. Got some stuff I got to do. See you guys later. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.